This is K.M. Wyland, and you are listening to the 158th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. This was quite the eventful week. In addition to finishing up with the last of my editor's notes on Dreamlander, I also have some exciting news. I've been asked by Writer's Digest University to create an online workshop based on my book, Outlining Your Novel, Map Your Way to Success. So, for all of you who have been asking when I was actually going to add a workshop to the workshop section of my website, looks like it's going to be sooner than later. At this point, it looks like the workshop will be made up of eight week-long sessions and should hopefully be available by roundabout Labor Day. In the meantime, I'll be riding like the wind to get it ready in time. Why Your Hero Needs a Yappy Sidekick The latest post in the video series on my blog discusses the value of a vocal, oft-present minor character who can act as a foil for your protagonist. To watch it, visit my blog at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d.blogspot.com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. And now, I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast. What is the purpose of your scene? In creating meaningful and effective scenes, the most important questions every writer should ask himself are, what is the focus of this scene? What is its purpose? Let's take a look at how to find the best answers to these questions. How to find your scene's purpose. Scenes are created in one of two ways. One, either we begin by envisioning something happening without yet knowing how it will move the plot forward, Or two, we start out with the knowledge of what needs to happen to move the plot forward, then build a scene around it. Often the latter is easier to work with since we're consciously building scenes with the plot's needs in mind. With the former, we can end up with vivid and organic scenes, but we have to twist them around to get them to fit the necessary purpose. Either way, the questions we need to ask ourselves next fall into line with Sidfield's advice in his classic screenplay. When you're preparing to write a scene, first establish the purpose, then find the components, the elements contained within the scene. Strip the scene down to basics. For the moment, forget about character development or theme. How does this scene move the plot forward? How does it build upon what happened in the previous scene, and how does it lead into the scene that will follow? In my Crusades era historical novel, Behold the Dawn, I envisioned a scene in which the protagonist, Marcus Annan, would meet a Scottish noblewoman in a Saracen prison camp. That was the purpose of the scene, but I didn't yet know how it would directly affect the plot. How to develop conflict around your scene's purpose. Once you know what you're trying to accomplish in a scene, the next question you need to ask yourself is, where's the conflict? Conflict can come in any number of forms, from outright war to a rumbling of tension. If your scene is going to be weighty enough to float its purpose, you must inject some inherent conflict. In Behold the Dawn, that conflict comes from the general threat of the two characters' imprisonment, and, as the scene progresses, a rising tension between the characters themselves, as they realize they may not be such strangers to one another after all. Your conflict will be the vehicle to express your scene's purpose and carry it forward to its point of impact with the scene to follow. Perhaps even more importantly, the conflict is what will keep your reader's attention. How to strengthen your scene's purpose with context. Once you know your scene's purpose and central conflict, you can deepen its subtext by exploring its context. Two characters arguing may fulfill both of the former qualifications, but by itself it doesn't offer much in the way of underwater ballast. Start asking yourself, what's under the surface of this scene? What's happening between these characters, or in the background, that isn't spelled out in the conflict? Maybe your characters are telling each other they can't stand the sight of each other, when really they're madly in love. Maybe they're trying to pretend nothing is wrong in their relationship, when really... One of them is plotting to kill the other. Subtext brings so much to the table, and all you have to do to put it into play is to choose your settings, dialogue, and narrative with care. What you don't say can be as powerful as what you do. If your madly in love characters are breaking up, why not set the date for Valentine's Day? Or maybe their falling out happens in a theater while the credits run on a love story's happy ending. 
Don't choose your character's surroundings randomly. Choose them to strengthen the emotional impact of every scene. I deliberately sat behold the dawn scene at night, in the middle of the stink and fear of a sick tent, to heighten the character's feelings of hopelessness and desperation, and to contrast with their meeting, which signals the beginning of something new and better for both of them. If you can consciously harmonize your scene's purpose, conflict, and context, you'll be able to focus it, and your reader's attention, down to a needle-fine point. And if every scene in your story can reach that level of focus, your novel as a whole will be that much closer to perfection. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's W-E-I-L-A-N-D, dot blogspot.com, and be sure to listen again next week. Mm-hmm.